Yeah, thanks, Keith. And uh, um, I'll, I'll try to give a, a quick overview here. I know you've touched on a lot of aspects of the property alre already, but 100% um, interest to, to earn, um, sorry, Golden Spike has the option to earn 100% interest in this property, which, you know, I've seen a lot of things in my years around the world. And I, I think this is a really, a really exciting project to be working on. It's a, it's a decent size, thir over 3,400 hectares. And, and right through the middle of it um, is what we call the Gregory River Massive Sulfide or, or BMS belt. Um, lightly explored in the past in a few key areas, but a lot of room to move. And, and we think this is an exciting project to be working on. Great location and um, just, just to highlight down to the south across the Bay of Islands is the York Harbor deposit, uh, a very similar style of mineralization and uh, just shows the, the length and the, the, uh, the size of this belt. And that's about 27 kilometers away. So uh, lots of room to move. So I'll um, real quickly just touch on the historical work. I know uh, Keith touched on a lot of this already. Uh, first discovery probably made back in the 20s when companies were looking for really super high grade um, copper veins, north of 10% copper, anything below that they weren't really that interested in. Uh, a, a few companies came in, they did some tunneling, they did some mapping, some sampling, some um, 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 you know, just various, various amounts of work, some drill holes. And it was really in the 1980s when the focus started to change towards what we call VMS or volcanogenic massive sulfide deposits. Theories were just starting to be developed on, on how these form around the world. And then the big companies started coming in looking uh, for this style of deposit. And these are copper, zinc, they can have gold, they can have um, silver. So they're, they're true compact polymetallic deposits. And the first big company to come in in earnest was Rio Tinto. And they certainly believed um, that there was strong potential here to host that style of mineralization. They did several years of work um, and, and, and pulled out for various reasons that um, big companies often have different reasons why they, why they um, you know, are interested and then pull out of a certain district. After that, uh, a company called Duval came in and I'm, I'm pretty certain this was a um, mineral exploration branch of the large oil firm Pennzoil. So they did some really good work on a few prospects and, and further enhanced the prospectivity for, for VMS deposits. They did a lot of work done down at the Steep Brook, um, showing down in the southern part of our property. And finally, Noranda came in and did a lot of work. And um, uh, when I say a lot of work, it was all early stage work. They did some uh, soil, some mapping, some sampling. And they had some very smart geologists in there who also, um, you know, supported the fact that this is a, a true VMS belt, and uh, there was a, a strong possibility that a deposit could be hosted in this in this area. And once again, low copper prices, um, you know, reasons, uh, corporate reasons, whatever they pulled out. And really no work has been done since then, except for Playfair came in in the, around the mid 2000s and did a, a little bit of work and a few drill holes. And um, so in general, this area has not been drilled at all. There's about 11 very shallow drill holes, 109 meters average depth along the entire 11 kilometer strike length. And of these, several actually hit some pretty interesting um, mineralization, which we'll get to in, in the next slide. 